Hey everyone, today I wanted to make a quick video on Topaz Sharpen. Just show an example when I feel like it really works and using the masking tool. So recently I was out by a lock near my house and I was lying in a hide. I was um, photographing a heron that was coming close to the hide. It was in the evenings, so I had backlight. So as you can see here, this is the heron that was kind of walking up on these rocks. And I, you know, I really like this image with, you get those bokeh rings in the foreground from the light reflecting through. When I phot photograph backlit like this, I like to keep my ISO quite low, or actually, I usually want to keep my ISO low all the time, but especially with backlight like this, because I often want to raise the shadows. So I was shooting in an ISO of 400, shooting a wide open at four, that left me with a shutter speed of one 250th of a second, which usually with a heron, unless you're trying to capture the action when it actually goes for it hunting, then it moves very slowly, so you can get away with really slow shutter speeds, actually. Uh, however, in this one here, though, I really like this image, but there is a slight thing that annoys me a little bit, and it's this little toe <laughs> down here. Do you see that the, the kind of nail, the claw kind of coming out here? If I zoom in a little bit here, you can see that this leg here, especially the claws at the bottom here, are not particularly sharp, they're actually a bit blurred. So it's moving and 1 250th of a second just wasn't enough to freeze the action. Now normally I don't mind about a little bit of blur like that in my images. In this particular image though, I'm kind of drawn to this uh, claw here because it's very bright right behind you. It really stands out and it just annoys me slightly that that is just a little bit blurry like that. So for this image here, I've already gone through my editing process and if you're curious about my kind of editing process. I have a video of when I use the different Topaz products and when I use Lightroom, Photoshop and all that. So I'll put a link to it uh, above and below as well. If you're interested in seeing what kind of, what stages I do what with my um, post-processing. So with this image here right now, I'm pretty much finished with the image. And the last thing I do is Topaz Sharpen. Um, and I don't always use Topaz Sharpen, but this is a case where I definitely want to use it, and especially for this right here. So let's just open this up in Topaz Sharpen AI. So they keep updating these, so just make sure you have the newest version because I feel like there has been some, there's a, there's been some big differences in Topaz Sharpen, especially using the masking tool. I found it to be a bit clunky before, but it works really well uh, just now, I feel. So let's see here, we go down here, uh, I leave all this stuff here alone for just now. I don't want to sharpen the whole image. You can see here, if we go to split view, it sharpened everything. And you can see here all the bokeh down here. Um, it's, it's getting overly sharpened to me, some of these things here as well, and the twigs. It's stuff that I just don't want sharpened. And I could sharpen the whole thing, I could mask it out in Photoshop after, or uh, you know, there's loads of different ways of getting around it or just not sharpen it so intently. So for this image here though, with just the um, with just the toes and the claws here I want to sharpen, I'm going to use the masking tool down here on the right. And see here, this is my brush. I'm going to use Edge Aware so that it tries to not go over the edges. I'm also going to go in 200%, just really close up and I'll make my brush a little bit smaller. Maybe something like that, maybe a little bit bigger. Okay, and I'm not going super carefully, I'm just kind of drawing in. I think some of my problems before here was that when I let go, sometimes the whole thing would disappear. But now they seem to fix that and it's, uh, it's working really well. And I, I want to get this upper part here as well because I quite like these grooves here and they're not quite sharp here. So I'm going to go all the way up the leg here. Now I'm not super careful with this here, something like that. And subtract a little bit here and make this a little bit smaller. I find that I don't need to be super careful here, but I'm, I'm going to just be a little bit, do a little bit better than what I did here. Take away some of this extra stuff here. So you can see here, the edge of where it isn't 
the best so if you want to get it exact you're gonna to have to go over a little bit extra I don't find that I need to be that exact with um, with the brush here because you know if it's gonna sharpen something on the outside here it's not really gonna make a difference because there's not much there but I'm gonna take away this here as you can see here though because I don't want these edges here to become overly sharpened so then we apply the mask and then have a look what the preview looks like now this is really close up so you know it might look a little bit fake um, when you're this close up so let's go back to 100 percent and maybe put that down to normal see what this does as you can see here there's nothing else in the image that's being done anything done to it is just that the claws the leg toe it's already now, I think this is an improvement, but I'm going to go for trying a little bit different things here. Uh, I'm going to go for motion blur actually, that's what it is. Let's do that automatic, let's just see what that does. So I don't think that's quite enough, so let's go for very blurry. Okay, now it's starting to look like something. Uh, I really like what it's done up here. This looks superb to me. It looks very much like it does on this side. Maybe a little bit too much down here, so I'm going to back off this a little bit. See what it does. I always like dragging this across. It's like a surprise every time. Alright, there we go. I think we're starting to look like something here now. Maybe even 50%. You can see the difference here, even so far away. Okay, I think we got it here. I think I'm happy with that. Let's just do 100 again, just see. I'm quite happy with that. Apply. Okay, so I'm gonna color code that so I know which one is which. And that's the before, and that's the after. So you can really see here, it really draws out um, these kind of grooves that are on the legs up here as well. So that's looking a lot better. It really matches what is on the other, the left leg here. And this here is looking a lot better. You know, it's ad added some detail here and it's just looking, looking a lot better. And especially since it stands out in this brighter background here. So it's very important to get that sharp looking. Cool, so just a quick video there for an image that I thought would do really well with uh, Topaz Sharpen and just using the masking tool just to go in there and get the detail that I thought was um, was very important to get sharp. And especially an image like this, as you can see as well in the preview, there's so much going on in this image that sharpening the whole image just doesn't work that well. It starts creating a little artifact so in this particular case, the masking tool is just the way to go. So I use some of the Topaz products basically every time I edit an image. Pretty much always use Topaz Denoise. I sometimes use Topaz Sharpen, which you can see here, it can really rescue an image. Uh, Gigapixel is something I use all the time if I'm printing images. And I'm starting to experiment with some of the other ones as well. Uh, do give it a shot if you haven't checked out any of the Topaz products. There's a 30 day free trial, so you can just try it out, see if you like it. I'll put a code below as well where you can get 15% discount on the products. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Are you guys using any of the products? Uh, how are you getting on with them? Uh, Topaz, uh, Topaz Sharpen is a product that I sometimes use. I don't always use it. and Sometimes it can create some artifacts as we showed here. But then using the masking tool is a way to just really get around that. And it can really just rescue an image uh, like this when you have a little detail that you just need fixed. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.